Hey Savvy People, it's Savvy Nick here and today we're going to go through how to install the latest release of Parrot Security 4.9 and dual boot it alongside Windows 10. We'll first make some space on a storage disk, then we'll download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk and finally run through how to install Parrot alongside Windows 10. I'm here on my Windows 10 computer where I want to install Parrot alongside. With that being said, make sure to always keep a backup of all your data before making any changes to your disk or system. I highly suggest making backups of all your data before continuing if you haven't already done so. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and make some space with the disk management tool. So if we hit the start menu and search for disk manage, you'll see here we have the create and format hard disk partitions. If I open that up, you can see that I have the C root file system for Windows and that it currently takes up around 120 gigs here. What I wanna do is right click on here and shrink this volume so I can make some space for Parrot. There's always a potential to mess up while installing operating systems and you wouldn't want to lose all your data. At the very least, I would suggest trying this on a Windows platform that you don't care about potentially losing all your data before applying it to another computer. Let's continue. So what I'm going to do here is enter in the amount of space that I want to give to Parrot. So I'm going to give around 60 gigs and I'll do that by typing in 60,000 because it's in megabytes. You can see that I have 103 gigs available and now that the C drive will have 62 gigs after I'm done shrinking this volume. I suggest at least giving 32 gigs for most Linux distributions. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the shrink and that will shrink down the size of my Windows C partition and then give me some unallocated space where we're going to install Parrot onto. All right, after we're done with this, we can go ahead and exit out of the device manager. All right, now I'm going to download Parrot from the parrotsec.org website. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installs. What we'll do is scroll down here so we can go to the downloads tab. And inside the downloads tab, we have a bunch of different versions of Parrot available to us. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll over to the security tab. And in here, I'm gonna go with the default mate desktop of the security version of Parrot. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the direct download button. After that, the download will launch and it might take a little while to go ahead and download. Now the default is a 64-bit installer here of Parrot, so you'll have to have a 64-bit processor in order to install this. All right, now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the Belena Etcher app. So let me start it real quick. I'm going to use Belena Etcher in order to flash the image onto a USB, CD, or DVD that we just got done downloading. First thing I'm gonna do is select the image, and that's this Parrot Security 4.9 x64 for a 64-bit architecture, and I'm gonna select Open. Since I already have a USB, CD, or DVD in my computer, it automatically shows up. But if you have multiple ones, you can go in here and select the proper USB, CD, or DVD. Make sure you do because all the data and contents on that USB, CD, or DVD will get erased. So I went ahead and selected this USB and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application that's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you wanna download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as UNEP Bootin or Rufus. Let's go ahead and hit the flash button and begin the flash process. All right, and after you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Parrot OS on and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys such as F2 or F10. Following that, you'll find a tab usually called boot order and you'll exchange the order so that the bootable disk is first to boot. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS, and then your computer should boot into the installer. All right, and once Belen is finished here, you might get a little bit of a prompt here. We won't worry about it. Just make sure that Belena tells you that the flash is complete. Now I'm gonna go ahead and exit out. There's also another way that we can try and boot up the disk without getting into BIOS. This works for some computers, so let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, and I'm gonna go to the start menu and look for something that's called changed advanced startup options. So here we go, I found it. And in here, we can hit the restart now button. What this will do is allow us to select and use a device in order to boot next time. So let's go ahead and use that. As you can see here, I have a few devices. The one I'm most interested in is the USB, CD, or DVD that I just got done flashing. So as you can see here, I have the UEFI CD-ROM drive, which I wanna boot into. Give it a few moments. And once things start up, you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. And if you do see the screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion. Let's go ahead and select live, unless you have some special type of hardware. You might go with the fail safes down here, such as if you have an Nvidia graphics card, you might want the no mode set. Anyways, 
I'm gonna go into the live installer and start installing the system. All right, and once the live image loads up, we're gonna go ahead and select the install parrot icon. And now we're being welcomed to the installer. Let me just make this a little bigger here so we can see it. All right, and the first thing that we're asked for is the type of language we want to go through with the installer with. American English is fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead and select next. Now we're asked for a time zone. Go ahead and put your time zone in. I'm gonna be in America's New York. That's fine for me. And you can also change the system language down here Mine's currently set to the default American English and the number date formats are also set down here so you can change them accordingly to your territory. Let's go ahead and select next once we have those in. Following that, we get to specify our keyboard layout and you can test it down here in this field. So if I type in QWERTY, I should get out QWERTY and I sure do. So this is working for me. Go ahead and select whatever keyboard model and layout you have. The default works for me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. All right, and after that, we get a few options to go ahead and install Parrot. So we have the install alongside option, but that's not what we want. Instead, we want the replace a partition option. This is because the install alongside option lets you shrink a partition, which we've already done on the Windows side. So there's no reason to go ahead and shrink it for Parrot. We already have that, but just make sure that you have the proper storage device selected. I have mine, as I can see here, it's the 120 gig total disk, but I can see that there's already currently a few partitions on the disk. So we have SDA 1, 2, 3, and 4. This all belongs to the Windows side of things, and that's not what we want to touch. Instead, we just want to use the free space over here that we created. So there's 58.6 gigs available. I'm going to give that to Parrot. And if I select it down here, you'll see that we get an after result where it shows you what it's gonna look like. So we have all of our partitions remaining intact and then pair it at the very end. And it says that the EFI system partition dev SDA2 will be used for starting Parrot. Well, this is fine by me. All that means is that it's gonna go ahead and combine the two boots together into the SDA2. And since we have plenty of space, it looks like 100 megabytes. At this point, you'll wanna make sure you did this correctly because this is an easy way to go ahead and mess up your system and delete partitions on the Windows side. So now that I'm ready and I know I've selected the proper disk and the, and the proper unallocated space, I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. So. We're being asked for a full name now. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine in. So Savvy Nick for me. I want to use the computer name to be Savvy Nick and the login user to be Savvy Nick as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my password and then repeat the password to confirm it. You can also select the login automatically option, but I don't normally select this because a user could just restart your computer and log in. After you're done with this, let's go ahead and select next. And now you're given a summary of changes that are going to be made. The main things we're looking for is to make sure that all of our Windows partitions are gonna remain intact. Parrot's gonna be at the end, and now I'm ready for an install. And of course, it's tell, warning you one last time that they're confident that you did everything properly. You can go ahead and hit install now. All right, and the install process is going to take a while now. I'll go ahead and fast forward through this. All right, and once the installer is all done, we'll go ahead and select the restart now option and hit done. At this point, you'll be told by Parrot OS that you can go ahead and remove that USB CD or DVD of the installation live medium that you have in your computer. That way you boot into your newly installed system instead of the live image again. So go ahead and do that and then press enter. And if everything was done successfully, you'll get the grub menu where you can select between some different options here. And the most important here is the Windows Boot Manager. So let's go ahead and make sure we can still boot into our Windows computer. And it looks like things are working for me. So I'm just gonna log in and confirm things. Yep, everything's good there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and restart once more in order to boot into Parrot. All right, now I'm gonna select the very first option for me. All right, and I'm gonna log into the user I created. And here we are, welcome to your newly installed Parrot 4.9 security desktop. Congratulations if you made it this far, you've, you've successfully installed Parrot 4.9 alongside Windows 10. Let's just take a quick look around. In the top left-hand corner, you have the availability to go through your applications and all the subcategories. So what's interesting is that they have some pen testing tools here. Since this is a security distribution, there's plenty of tools to use in order to test for vulnerabilities on systems. In the places, you just have a quick shortcut to some of the most popular used user locations. In system, you have, you have preferences and just different settings available, as well as logging out and shutting down the computer. A few quick shortcuts here, the Firefox web browser, which is a default web browser for Parrot. And then we have the Mate Terminal as well as the Pluma text editor. 
On the background here, we just have a few quick and easy access items. So the home directory for the current user, pair it much like my computer, and then trash here to access the trash bin. In the left bottom corner, we have a menu, which is much like applications, but you get a little bit more control and you have a search bar that you might run. I'll go ahead and open this up and keep this in the background for now because I do want to do something with that. Up on the top here, we just have the resources of the processor and memory usage, as well as networking being currently used. And then on the right hand side, we just have internet connection that we're currently, that we're wired or wirelessly connected to. And then on the right hand corner, we just have the time and date as well as on the left of volume control. On the bottom right, we have various different workstations that we can work with up to four here. And that's really it for the brief overview. Inside the Parrot terminal, I'm just gonna go ahead and launch HTOP so we can kind of see the resources being used here. As you can tell, we have 537 megabytes out of the 7.7 .7 gigs available of memory being used. We have four cores here and they're cycling between about 2% and zero. We have 66 tasks started with 133 threads and no swap being used. You can see all the other processes running in the background here. I just like looking at HTOP to take a look at the resources being used. All right, well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Parrot OS alongside Windows 10. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.